usually takes place in race one, but it will start in race three today with some of the scratches in races one and two. But we do have a nice carryover in that wager, and that is $4,804 in the rolling super high five. As we get into race five on the program, the 20 cent rainbow pick six, always a very popular wager here. We have a carryover of just over $6,200, of course, to get into some late pick five action that starts in race six as well, Ron. Yeah, you know, the reason that we don't have the rolling super five in the first two races, you need seven horses in each one of those races to have the rolling super five. Five, so with the scratches, a couple of those races move from the turf to the main track. That's why it's starting in race three today. A lot of people confused about that. But if there's seven more, or more entrance in the field, we will have a rolling super high five. You can put it that way. And <laughs> don't let that slip by as well, uh, because right. race three comes up really quickly, and we do have a nice carryover in that rolling super high five. Once again, over $4,000. We'll go get right into the action here. Race one at Gulfstream Park on this 10 race program, made in $16,000 event, originally listed for the turf, will run on the main track at seven furlongs. And with the scratches, now run on the main track, the 12 crazy Frank C. Looks like the horse to beat from the outside. Absolutely, Lex. Looks like the one to beat in here and actually used him on my early pick five ticket today because I thought that was the way to go in the, in the race. You know, it was uh, sort of on the fly this morning, but I, I just think that the uh, early pick five, you see it there. I went three deep here, seven, 11, and 12. And you see my progression that it goes down two, right, two horses in both second and third. Then I go three deep in the fourth, a $36 ticket. And I, I think I, I, I feel good about this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, $36. And that's a pretty affordable pick five ticket. We'll take a look at the 12 Crazy Frank C and we'll actually go back to his debut performance that was going against Maiden $35,000 company and Ron I actually remember this horse was entered in opening weekend and he was either I think he was entered in also eligible and they actually scratched him when it was rained off the turf on the main track the connections aside to keep him in here once again today now this was going seven furlongs and he was just narrowly defeated but you can see him picking up the pieces and closing Closing from off the pace, again, just beaten by a half length in this particular event. But I really liked his late energy. He came with a nice closing run, and I thought that was very impressive. So clearly he can get the distance. Clearly he's okay at the seven furlongs, and this is a big class drop, too. Yeah, he's going from 35000 down to uh, $16,000, and right there looks like the one to beat. One of the horses I did use, as I mentioned, on my ticket. And the name is a pretty funny, Crazy Frank C. Happens to be owned by Frank Call Calabrese. You make these. There. I'm not <laughs> going there right now. The other horse, one of the horses I used on my ticket in there was the 11 Dothraki Warrior for the fans of uh, Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect name. He's going back to the main track. A couple of solid turf outings across town. He finished second at a mile and a mile in the six on November 1st. And he had trouble in his last race at a mile last time out. And I, this horse ran pretty well on the main track at Monmouth, so I kept him on my ticket. I went to the five gray balls of fire here in the exacta for Dan Kabiski had a winner on yesterday's card on the turf. And you look at this horse's performances, and yes, they're a little bit subpar. He ran a three buyer speed figure last time out, but that was against Made in Special Way Company, and that was on a sloppy sealed track and going two turns at Laurel. So today, now on the cut back to seven eighths, and a big drop in class from Made in Special Way Company to the Made in Claiming level, I think, is going to help. You look at uh, this will be the second time blinkers, of course, and coming in off the freshening. When this horse debuted, it was actually against a pretty decent field. The winner, Two Dare, was in uh, was very very sharp that day. Even a couple of the horses who finished behind him were legitimate, tough, made in special weight contenders. So I go to him thinking that this is a big drop in class, and I rounded out with a nine. Go, Salvatore, go. Well, we talked about this angle yesterday off the air, uh, the, and that is the number seven. Cross that bridge is cutting back to seven furlongs on the main track after showing speed going long on the turf. One of my favorite angles here, and that was against $40,000 maidens going a mile and a 16th. I think this horse is going to run pretty nice in the first race, six to one on the board, and that's from the Jenna Antonucci. Bottom. Your angles have been very, very <laughs> successful, including the, I believe, red shirt angle or something Well, that like one that is the other hard day. to believe, that one. <laughs> All right, we'll go to race two here, $30,000 conditional claimer, one mile on the main track, a couple of scratches in here. And this race, honestly, I had a pretty tough time with trying to re-handicap it now that it's off the turf. I thought I had a little bit of a, more of an idea when it was an originally on the turf. You go, I land on the eight, blame it on Tequila here for Kristen Mulhall, 
primarily because of the statistics that Barn does very well with kind of the turf to dirt angle. So that's where I land on. This horse has been relatively formful against a tough company in the past few starts. Now gets to the main track where he has at least a, le a legitimate dirt form in the past. The past two years, turf to dirt, though, the Barn knocks at 20%, and it's almost a positive ROI. I went in that direction. Yeah, and uh, I, I can understand using that horse. And I did go with the number 12 in here, and that's out caravan. Ended for the main track today. It's the son of Birdstone. He's stepping up to the next level after rallying four wide to defeat $30,000 two lifetime claimers at this same distance. I just thought the main track only. Usually the main track only is not where I go, but I looked at this race and mm -hmm. had the same problems you did, and I just thought this was the logical horse in here. And, you know, you make a good point, Ron, is this is such a kind of a tricky race now that it's on the main track that I think the main track only entrant will probably be well played, good connections, good main track uh, performance is going into this race. And if you have kind of a horse that you really like in here, other than uh, perhaps the, the 12 to the outside, this these are the types of races that you get value in yeah, if you like Without a, a doubt, without a doubt. And you know, your horse you gave out was a big morning line. A lot of people don't realize that morning line mm -hmm. was made for the turf. We're certainly not gonna be those big odds in there. And we'll take a look at the four stock. This is a horse that you used for Ramon Preciado last time out. <coughs> was a decent third at Parks, but could transition that form. I believe you have a pretty decent statistic yeah, on him. Yeah, pretty decent statistic mm -hmm. on Ramon Preciado. We're going to pop up here. And this one is debuting locally. There you see it. He's 34%, 224 starts with a 31 to 60 day layoff with uh, the three year olds and upwards. I just thought that was a good stop. He does a, a good stat. He does a good job with it. Put, kept him on a ticket, debuting locally, responded to a drop of com competition by finishing third. It was against 30,000 three lifetime claimers. It was going a mile up at parks. Mm -hmm. Looking at the nine, Tiger Bourbon, a horse that you and I both used in the mix and has been formful on the turf. But if you go back to his uh, kind of off-track performances, I will say it, it almost seems as though the sloppy seal track or a track that has a little bit of moisture even heightens this horse on the main track. And we very well could see it as the main track is rated as good now. But the nine, Tiger Bourbon, again, if he can transition his turf form to the main track, he should be very tough as well. Yeah, and that's why I use him. If you go back that wet, wet track, he uh, ran once, he finished second, looked like he ran good. He's going to benefit with the uh, move to uh, the main track. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, the main track is starting today listed as good. Mm -hmm. We'll go on to the third race, an allowance optional claiming event. And once again, a reminder, this race does start that rolling super high five, so it doesn't take place in races one and two, but it will start in race three and a nice field of seven horses on the main track at six furlongs for these two-year-old fillies. And I like the three Miss Inclusive here. We'll take a look at her debut performance, which I thought was quite good. I think there's a couple of things to take note of out of this race though you go and you look at uh the two pace setters there elusive Joni was even money in that race uh she was coming into the race with very good form and she matched with a sensible match as well on the front end this was just a perfect setup for miss inclusive she stalked from off the pace she let kind of the speed horses go out in front of her got a dream trip just rallying from off the pace on the rail so she s hugged the rail she saved all the ground and she drew clear that said i know that's kind of a negative but that said i do think that she's got some serious talent and the statistics speak for themselves uh, ron i went back and typed and looked at uh, john service here two-year-olds winning their last start uh, seven for ten in the money. So they come back and they really, really do respond nicely. Laurel, huh? Okay. <laughs> no, but also in that race, a couple of next out winners. So it even mm -hmm. uh, became a more imp impressive. Was highlighted with those uh, two other horses coming back to win the next out. No, I'm in agreement. I'm just making fun of you there. I did use the number three, Miss Inclusive, right on top of my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the girl out of Maryland, but <laughs> dot, dot, dot. The two island Satan is, is an interesting horse in here as well. Todd Pletcher brings out this two-year-old filly by Spitestown. And uh, you look at her debut performance at Saratoga. It was on the sloppy steel track, and it was a very impressive performance. But she kind of dictated the pace. She drew a clear from the rest of the field. She really, uh, it was impressive, but we just haven't been able to see her duplicate that race in her following two starts. However, they have been against the Stakes Company and then obviously in the grade two matron as well. Yeah, I mean, she's the one to beat in here, you think. Uh, you know, if the Miss Inclusive, she's the one to beat just on the drop in competition. You know, like you mentioned, she broke a maiden at Saratoga at first, asking, went right to the uh, sorority, mm -hmm. finished uh, third, and then ran in the grade two matron. So I think this is a logical spot. Uh, Todd Pletcher has just been on fire with his two-year-olds here. Going into the, uh, yesterday's card, he was perfect four for four with his two-year-old runners. So uh, 
that's pretty good. Yeah, they've been uh, coming out in very good fashion. The eight Barbarenda is a horse I'll, I'll round up the mix with, and she just won her debut at Gulfstream there, but it was an emphatic win. She drew off clear by th the rest of the field by four lengths, and I like the fact that she draws to that outside post position, and she has speed, so she really could dictate the entire shape of the race from that outside post. You know, number four, Dad's Kiddo will try $75,000 optional claimers after shipping in from Indiana Downs and finishing second to Cassidy Stakes and Susan Girl Stakes winner, Ballet Diva. Ballet Diva, a really nice horse. And that was in the $75,000 house party. Uh, Dane Kabiski, we've been mentioning him ad nauseum up here, but mm -hmm. uh, we ha it's good because he's doing great. Rafael Hernandez in the saddle. And this horse coming out of a pretty nice race. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to the fourth race, the maiden $50,000 event. Five furlongs on to the main track here. And uh, on the turf, I originally went to the one Saratoga Angel, trying to, you know, get creative. I, I figured that this horse broke from post 10 last time out. She showed some speed, and now she breaks from post one. I thought she would be able to maybe clear from the rail. However, now on the main track, I think it completely changes the shape of the race. I land on a first-time starter for trainer Eddie Pliza, Luis Saez, in the saddle, the four walloping win. Just an interesting stat that I found for trainer Eddie Pleasa in the past two years with his two-year-old first-time starters at Dirt Sprints. Uh, tw he wins at 24%. I know you have a statistic on him as well. Yeah, he's pretty good. You see uh, for his first start, you know, overall he's uh, 25%, 57 starts, so he's good with two-year-olds. I want to also show you this one too, you know, and further on. So a, a good race, uh, you know, uh, uh, and that might be the way to go with a first-time starter in here. I did keep the horse I had on top in the main track, and that is the number eight wicked one who's dropping to the $50,000 level, responded last time to a drop of competition with a fourth place finish. It was against $75,000 maiden. It was going six furlongs on the aqueduct main track. A Marquesi, Jose Lescano up top, atop this thought of insumation. I just thought this was the logical one, and I'd see you have it on your ticket too. But a first time start is a pretty interesting way to go in a race that was originally scheduled for the turf. So trainers had a, a certain thing in mind, and now mm -hmm. that's not happening. With a first time starter, I guess they can go either way. Yeah, I don't know. You you look at the breeding Harlan's Holiday out of a, or excuse me, include out of a distorted humor mare. There's a couple uh, different ways to go. I agree with you on the Eight Wicked One. I do think that she's going to be the filly to beat in here for Marquesi. I initially thought I went against her in this race on the turf because I thought it might have been a little bit of an experiment trying her on the turf for the first time. But I do think now that it's run on the main track, this only helps her. As you said, she's got legitimate dirt form in the past few starts, where some other connections might have been training into it turf sprint. So I, I think it completely changes uh, the race shape here. I had to use her in here as well, especially on the cutback. You see at Aqueduct, she weakened late, but now uh, cutting back to five furlongs, she should be set to go. The seven, Lucent Lady is another one for Ralph Nix. Has good percentages dropping from the maiden special weight to the maiden claiming level. And this horse was a decent fourth in debut against Slightly Tougher. Yeah, I closed it out with the three. Starship Rain was stepping up to the $50,000 level. Ran two real nice races on the turf, and I like the current form. Hope it can translate it to the main track today. We didn't speak about the five golden delicious Red Hot Connections. Uh, Todd Pletcher here, $150,000 purchase. This two-year-old filly by Harlan's Holiday. The only negative stat that I could find if for the connections here, uh, Todd Pletcher only one for 17 with mating claimers, first-time starters, and it's a 67 cent or, uh, kind of <laughs> ROI. So again, maybe that's a horse that could get some play and might be a vulnerable favorite in there. Yeah, that, that may have want to go a different way and uh, like the eight wicked one who's got some proven dirt form. Mm -hmm. All right, with that said, we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, we're gonna take a look at the 20 cent rainbow pick six. We do have a carryover this afternoon of just over $6,200 right after this commercial break. Welcome back to Gulfstream Park and welcome back to Gulfstream today. We're taking a look at the uh, 20 cent rainbow pick six. Once again, carryover of just over $6,200 as we get into the sequence. And 
couple of races originally carded for the turf now run on the main track, so that does kind of switch it up a bit. I really liked my pick six ticket yesterday. Today, <laughs> had to go back to the drawing board. Couldn't find any singles, but we'll take a look at the ticket here. Race five to start us off, only using two horses in the first leg of the sequence, the two and the nine. We'll get to them in just a few moments. Race six going too deep there as well, the 11 and the 13. Race seven, four deep. Race eight, going with the 4, 14, and 15, race 9, 2, 5, 6, and race 10, 5, 6, 12, $86.40. I really tried my best, try to make it a little bit cheaper, but some of these races are just head scratchers now on the main track, and we'll get to them in just a moment. But race 5 does kick off the sequence, a maiden 12,500 condition at the one-turn mile on the main track. I went to a kind of tricky horse here, the 2, Charlie's Wisdom, has never tried the main track before in its entire career, but I do think that the class purposes alone should put this horse into contention. You go look at the statistics too, Nicholas Gonzalez, synthetic to dirt at Gulfstream. Bats at about 13%. I thought that was kind of a lower percent than uh, what I was, uh, was expecting here, but Javier Castellano does hop aboard uh, this three-year-old by Corinthian, and I think the mile should suit him well. He should be able to maybe make that late closing running I style. Mean, I mean, the obvious thing in here, this horse has had hit the board in 10 of 14 mm -hmm. races on the synthetic surface, but it looks like he might be a professional maiden. We hope he can get out, and I think the mile's gonna help you get in Javier Castellano. That's certainly gonna help. And when you go through the past performance of this race, this one certainly looks like a, a, a logical choice in here. We both have it on top of our ticket. And I like the fact that you use the nine and the exact <laughs> two, because I only use these two horses to start the sequence off, because I do think that this is going to be the pace of the race. The number nine, Tonight Tonight, trained by Wesley Ward, Rafael Hernandez in the saddle. I showed speed, went uh, gate to wire, technically, last time out, disqualified, and placed second. But I think he's got outside speed, and you look at the connections, too. When they have horses that are fast enough to make the lead, they actually win at 34%. So this is a horse that could just shake clear on the lead and, again, take the field gate to wire. Yeah, just got to stay uh, true in the stretch and get the job done today. He's done something that no one else in this field has done. One, mm -hmm. albeit he was disqualified, <laughs> but he's done something. So I like him on the ticket, too. I mean, I was torn between the two and the nine. I was trying to be cute with the two, and, of course, you and I picked the same two <laughs> horses in here. Uh, what right. else did you use? I, I just threw in the, uh, the six in here as as well, but again, I, I do think in, in the race shape, the race just might boil down to those two. Perhaps you could even use the 12 El Discreto in here. You opted for the four Warriors and Sting. Yeah, and uh, when, if you read my analysis today, it just says I think this horse can grab a share. I mm -hmm. think the two and nine might be the logical ones in here, and the, the four I have in for uh, the trifecta players or superfecta players. Let's hope we have them to kick off the sequence. <laughs> we'll move on to the sixth race on the card. 16,000 non-winners of two lifetime condition, five furlongs on the main track, and uh, this is another kind of a head scratch one originally carded for the turf. I land to the way outside. I still stick with the 13 secret diary, although we have seen her uh, maybe benefit from uh, transitioning her form to the turf as of late. Now she has to go back to the main track. We'll take a look at her last replay, though, and I do think that there are uh, a couple things. Now, Dan Kabisky, one thing that I've really noticed uh, in the past couple of starters He's been having some of his horses just significantly drop from the maiden special weight to the maiden claiming level, and it's really been uh, um, improving his statistics here. But you see this filly closing from off the pace. She's multiple lengths last at the top of the stretch, and she makes up a tremendous amount of ground. This visually, I thought, was very, very impressive, all considering that the one, it wasn't getting weary-legged. The one had good energy as well, and she just blew past him like uh, she was actually, he was tied to the to the pole there. So, again, looking at this horse, I think the drop in class last time out did the trick. This is a filly that was coming out of really unfortunate races. She was completely hindered by some unfortunate trips. She finally got the trip she deserved last time out, and I stick with her. Well, you do this to me every day. You show a good uh, a replay there, and then I don't have that ticket on my <laughs> late pick five, so we'll show you my ticket in here uh, of the late pick five, and if you're not aware, that's the last five races on the card. It's a 50-cent wager, and you can see I went with 3, 10, 11 in there. Might have to go back and add that 13, 3 next, and you see the progression as it goes down. It's a $54 ticket this afternoon. Like your Rainbow Six ticket, a uh, little more expensive than we normally do, but these races are wide open this afternoon, so blame Dixie on top of my ticket. 
Okay, blame Dixie. We can talk about this filly as well. I used her in the exact end. She should show some speed. Uh, last time out, she took the field gate to wire. Now, the only thing is, last time out, she had the rail. She had the advantage. Now she has to kind of draw to that way outside post position. There's only two scratches to her inside. Again, I think it's it was more of a detriment on the turf than on the main track. Though. Yeah, I think this will be okay for that horse this afternoon. Another horse that I want to mention, I used Patient Digner in second. who was solid in defeat when she responded to a turn back in distance uh, running a late uh, uh, finishing second beat and a half length of five furlongs versus 12 five two lifetime claimers uh, uh, she gets the pace in here you know she's been on the turf but I think she gets the pace in here the horse I want to talk about is the three Coco's cat I think this one is going to be interesting in here is moved a long shot? no it's not my long shot okay. but his horse I threw in a tick and I'll tell you why moved to the Chuck Simon barn via to claim we try five furlongs after defeating sixteen thousand dollar maidens going five and a half furlongs here you say oh, of course but it was last March. Paco Lopez is going to be saddled. I respect the barn. I think this horse is going to benefit a lot with the move to the main track today. Okay, one to watch out for there. In race six, we'll go on to the seventh race, a maiden $25,000 claiming event, a six furlongs on the main track, scratch the 10, Queen G in that event. And uh, I still, I stick with the one Avalancha here as the top selection for Antonio Santo, this two-year-old filly. When she debuted, she uh, drew the inside post position. She drew the rail as again here today, but that was on a sloppy sealed track. And again, you look at her breeding, I think she's one of the more well-bred fillies in the field and also she does draw the the rail still but she got a tremendous amount of schooling in that particular event because she didn't make she wasn't fast enough to make the le lead she wasn't really even close to the lead but I thought that she at least had some follow through she finished up well and she has the experience yeah it was almost like a learning uh, a, 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 a you know race for her because mm -hmm. she they was on her inside you mentioned they took her back and she closed well I have her on the ticket too there but I did go with the number four in here constraint who's uh, dropping to the twenty five thousand dollar level you just mentioned Dan Kabinsky dropping horses and this is what's happening here facing maiden, ma maiden special weight uh, winners with some, some limited success during April and May we mentioned the trainer is pretty good with the horses making similar class drops he's got the daughter of hold me back training forwardly first race but in six months all right, the 12 Starship Maiden is an interesting one for Stima tomorrow. You look at this uh, Philly's performance last time out. She showed speed and she faltered late. Now she's coming in off a little bit of a freshing, about a month. They give her Lasix for the first time. They put the blinkers on and they take the weight off with a <laughs> five-pound apprentice. So I think you know they're just kind of throwing the kitchen sink at her, hopefully that's hoping that something will pop up today. Yeah, full complement of changes, we'll say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the 12 Starship <laughs> Maiden again. The two Salt and Pepper is one I'll just throw in. Efren. Loza again. I threw that statistic <laughs> out yesterday. It was my single in the pick six in the last leg of the sequence, and he delivered. Yeah, now it's what goes up to 49% or 50%. <laughs> I believe it's five for seven with two year old yeah. maiden, uh, two year old first time starters. Wow. So that's a very, very impressive statistic. Yeah, I did a great job, and uh, it was uh, fun. We won the last race, and uh, Gabby was jumping up and down. I could tell you, I can attest to that. I, I could it. I, it, was, <laughs> it was fantastic, though. All right, race eight on the card, $16,000 open condition claiming event, seven furlongs on the main track, originally carded for the turf. And uh, again, this is an interesting race, the four Treasury Devil I know you actually stuck with. And I was teetering back and forth between going to Treasury Devil, going to the outside, the number 15 horse I actually really like as well. Why'd you stick with the four Treasury Well, dropping Devil? a notch, turning back to seven furlongs today. If you're not aware, this originally scheduled for seven and a half furlongs on the turf. It reverts back to seven furlongs in the main track after leading every step of the way to defeat $20,000 claimers going a mile in the 16th, albeit it was on the Marmot uh, turf back on September 27th, but George Navarro keeps this horse in. He does an excellent job whether other horses are on the turf or the main track, and I just thought off that performance, this is the logical one in this spot. A lot of the time we see them hold their form on the main track as well because it was a case in point yesterday, Chad Brown's uh, horse Comet 62. She was a class in the race, even though she might have not had the best dirt form she still hung on and wound up being victorious so a lot of the times we do see 
class just holds, whether it be on the turf or the dirt. And I like the fact that she's quickened up early in her past couple of starts under the new barn. She showed a lot more speed than what she's shown in the past, including two turns last time out going gate to wire. So again, do like her in this event. The 15 Mystical Turf is a horse that I'm going to be using, though. Her main, his main track performances, again, he's been facing slightly tougher, and uh, it doesn't look like he's got a tremendous amount of early speed. So I like the fact that Paco Lopez is afford to maybe be aggressive with this horse and get him into contention early. Well, what about the number 16 with the greatest name up for a horse? Steve. Steve. They have a very simple name in his horse. He, he's entered for the main track today. He's cutting back to seven furlongs after following back-to-back -back route victories at Laurel. And you were telling me about this a little earlier. Then comes back and he's really impressive. He wins a commanding. Uh, he beats a $6,250 uh, claimers going a mile 70 yards at Gulfstream Park West for his third victory in the row. Well, this was a horse that I completely went against when he was dropping in class at Laurel. <laughs> I said, no way am I going to pick this horse because I do believe he went off as a short price favor. Yeah, 50 cents on the dollar. Right. And proved me wrong. I went against him once again. Proved me wrong. <laughs> Last time out, I didn't handicap the race, but he would have proved me wrong <laughs> once again. And he might prove me wrong again today. So <laughs> the 16 Steve does draw in. He finally gets to run. But I love that horse. <laughs> I am looking forward to seeing him run today. <laughs> we'll go to race nine, though, in a $25,000 open claimer. Six furlongs on the main track. And I went with kind of a tricky horse in here, the 16 Cowtown Jane. But there are some other horses in here that I do think think have legitimate uh, form. The two cat and dog would be one. The three scoff. Again, I could have gone in multiple directions, and I really wish that I could have even used maybe four horses in the pick six. Yeah, here. it's a pretty wide open affair, and I did not. You can see our selections up there. We're only in agreement with well, one of one <laughs> of uh, one horse in there. I did go with the four Cantera Rock, who's dropping to this level today, which is twenty five thousand dollars on the main track. Turn it back to three quarters. Uh, had a race at the distance and a win. Hitting the board of one of two uh, races, going a, a mile on the turf. It's the old turf to dirt. Angle, Antonio Sano, MSCL, Jalamiro handling, uh, which is a combination. It's a drop down surface switch and turn back. So, three different things this horse doing. And I like the connections, I like the jock. So, I put four Katia Lock on top of my ticket. She's getting a tremendous cost relief against the uh, allowance optional claiming company at Gulfstream Park West, Gulfstream as well. Uh, so, she's definitely one to look out for. The six Cowtown Jane. The reason why I picked her today, I think you'll get a decent price as she's only been going against made in $25,000. Company. But last time out, they gave her Lasix for the first time. She wound up in the winner circle. Today, now, she her main track workouts are actually not too slow. They're quite decent. Now the blinkers go on, second time Lasix. And again, I think this might be the transition where the blinkers go on because the connections might not think she'll show as much speed on the main track as she did on the dirt last time out. So the blinkers might really complement that type of transition. So going with her at a decent price. But we must talk about the two cat and dog in here. Now, unfortunately, draws the rail post position, but first off the claim for a trainer, Mike Maker, she won in debut against Lesser Company, but I like the step up off the claim. Yeah, no, not bad trainer Maker. He's pretty good with uh, no, new claims. He keeps the status quo. He's got Corey Lannery in the irons today, so lots of things to like about this horse shipping it from Churchill Downs, and as you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, defeating $15,000 uh, career debut at Churchill Downs, so it looks like a logical spot for this horse today. Certainly going to take some money with those connections. One last horse, the five, Marsala picks up Javier Castellano, and this Philly actually chased really sharp middle fractions last time out, and it just looked like she didn't get comfortable whatsoever. Now she's going to have to face the dirt foes for the first time as she's never been on the main track. But again, I think if it's going to be a much slower pace than last time out. She, we could see her just uh, be a little bit more comfortable now going against this open $25,000 claiming level today. We'll go to the 10th and Ten final points. race on the card made in 12,500 condition on the main track at the one turn mile here and uh, the 12 bay point count is the direction I went in you didn't went to the five draw bridge we're hoping Dan Kabisky is going to have a good day today yeah, we got our same try we just boxed around a little different bit a little bit here you started with the 12 on top yeah we'll look at the we'll look at the 12 here bay point count uh, gets in with a lightweight with Vicente Gudiel here and uh, last time out was on a sloppy seal track now this was the first time on a main track for this horse and today gets at a distance it almost looked like he was just too slow for that six furlong sprint and it honestly looked like he wasn't taking a good liking to the track that day so now getting to perhaps a fast track as we get to the latter half of the card I would imagine the track will be drying out very nicely today at a distance and the drop in class and a weight break 
I think that might be the right way to go. The five drawbridge, though, looks to be the speed in here. Yeah, that, he, well, he looks like the speed in here. And put a check next to everything you said about the 12 bay point count is why I used it on a ticket. Drawbridge is trying to one turn mile locally after responding to a drop in competition by setting a, a pressured pace and finishing second. That was against 12 five maidens going to two turn mile across town. We mentioned Dane Kaminsky. Uh, Tyler Gaffleon was originally scheduled here, not in the saddle today. Okay, the six spider silk is one I'll be using in the pick six too. Another one who's dropping in class and <coughs> slightly stretches out from that last start. And this will be the second start off the freshening. Was never in contention last time out, but was decently bet at five to one. Again, I'll be using this horse in some exotics, including the pick six. But I do really like the five and the 12 in there. I could have even maybe used two horses deep in the final leg of the sequence. Well, I'm glad we're in a sort of agreement in the last race with a 13 horse field. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll certainly be a rolling super high five in that race. And these these days, honestly, even though we're off the turf on the main track, they really do pave the way to good value. If you pay attention, you do your research, you kind of go back and look at horses back dirt form, you could get a lot of dirt value because as we were mentioning earlier, a lot of people kind of tend to go to horses who've been keeping good form on the turf or the main track only entrance. And if you can kind of read between the lines, you could uh, fill your pockets up well, by the end of the well afternoon. That's the fun. You got to sit down and, you know, get get the work, roll up your sleeves and get the work done. And yeah, you'll certainly get uh, rewarded uh, generously here. All right. Speaking of getting work done, we better get to it here. We're going to take a quick break and Larry Comus will be back shortly with scratches and changes. Thank you once again for joining us here on Today at Gulfstream. Good luck.